Let's get you books turned to page 390. Page 390. Let's everybody stand and sing now. Page 390. Let's sing it out on the first. Sing it. Would you be free from the burden of sin? This power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you, O evil of victory, win? Sing it. There's wonderful power in the blood. Yes, sir.
I could fret over failures, grieve over past sins. Those times when I was uh, all I should have been, when doubt tries to come. Rushing in like a flood There's one thing that holds me I'm trusting the blood I'm trusting the blood Jesus gave for my sin Flood. I'm washed and made whole cause I'm trusting the blood Jesus won a great victory That day on the tree and he said in his name, I could claim it for me, for all of my need. He's more than enough. So I'm looking to I'm trusting the blood Jesus gave for my sin It still has the power To heal and to cleanse God's mercy is flowing crimson flood I'm washed and made whole cause I'm trusting the blood God's mercy is flowing in one crimson flood That's shouting ground this morning, my dear friend. <laughs> what can wash away my sins? <laughs> Nothing but the blood of Jesus. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. If that doesn't crank your batteries, you need to be recharged. <laughs> yes, God has done wonderful things here at Westside this week. To God be the glory. We've seen God just move in on us. and We've seen him at work in our hearts. And it seems like that we've entered into a phase of revival. In these last days, we sure do need it, don't we? 
We need God. We need his closeness, his strength, his leadership, his guidance in our daily life, our daily walk. I want to talk to you just for a few minutes, just for a few minutes on why praise him. Why praise him. If you have your Bible and turn with me to the uh, to chapter 113 in the book of Psalms. He's much to be praised today because we're under the blood. What a timely song that was and how it blessed my heart. And I'm so glad Miss Glenda said, get over it. As we look at this particular psalm in chapter 113, I'm going to take several passages of Scripture, but getting at verse number 1. And I want to answer this question, why praise Him today? Did you know that we were created to praise God? As believers, when we were saved, I mean, just think what He has done for us. He went to Calvary. He went to a cross. He went to a borrowed tomb. Then he went to heaven. And he says, I'm coming again. Now, as we look at verse number one, we see and we answer the question, why praise him today? First of all, it's very clear. We find in verse one, it says, praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So you see, we are commanded by God to offer praises to Him. People, we could, be, we could be nothing today without God. We're here today because we do have God. We are here today because we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're here today because He divinely guides us through the days of our life through the Holy Spirit leading and guiding and protecting us through our days. There's been many a time when we and you, I'm sure every one of us has been through a situation where we said, wow, how in the world did we get through it? How did we get by it? I want to tell you one thing. God knows how to protect his youngins today. And I know, and I tell you one thing. He knows how to direct our life. He knows how to, he has a plan for our life today. But we as God's youngins, we need to learn that we need to walk in His plan. And we find it in the Word of God. In verse number 1, it says in uh, Psalms 113, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, praise all His servants. That means all of His children. Are you a child of God today? Then you should be praising God. Now, that does not mean that you've got to get up and shout and wave your hands. Hey, listen, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I do it all the time. But in your heart, be thankful for what he's done for you. Be thankful for what he's doing for you. Be thankful for what he's going to do for you. He's preparing a home in heaven. And praise God, one of these days we're going to be there. <laughs> it says, praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. You see, we offer service today. We, all, we should be serving God daily as we live. Now, people can serve God in different ways. Some can sing, some can preach, some can teach, some uh, just uh, anyway. Well, did you know that even cleaning up the church is important to God? Nothing. If God's in it, nothing's little to God. Oh, I say sometimes people have told me, well, Brother Mel, but I just don't have anything to offer God. But listen, when you walk through the doors, you sit in a pew, and you have a smiling face with God all around you, that rubs off on other people, and that's serving God. Oh, listen. Hey, we're challenged today. He says, praise ye the Lord. Oh, praise ye the servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. His name is holy, holy, holy today. The angels in heaven are saying, holy, holy holy around the throne of God today. Holy, holy, holy. Should we do anything less? We should praise Him today. Oh, I've got a lot to praise God for. God's been good to this man. 
God's blessed me through the years. And I've got a lot to praise his name for. And hey, listen, I've got a lot more to praise him for what's coming. I don't know how much longer it's going to be. I don't know when he's coming back. But I'll tell you one thing I know when I leave this walk and I go that way, I will be in the presence of God. Are you saved today? Amen. Do you know him today? Oh, listen. It's a good day to be a Christian. Whew, I'm about to shout. Notice in, the, in verse number 2, it says, this is, he gives us the example of praising God. He says, blessed be the name of the Lord. Why, well, just go around and say, blessed, 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 blessed. Well, I'm telling you what, I don't know. There's a lot of blessing going on this last Monday morning. Oh, if you'd only been here. That's why we're charged up and fired up. I want to tell you, God shows up. This is picks up. Amen. Blessed. Are you blessed today? You got up. You had food on the table, clothes on your back, a good roof over your head, a good automobile to get to the house of God. You got a job. You got you, everything that you need. God has supplied that today. Everything you've got, God supplied it. Oh, my brother Melvin, you just don't know. I went to school. I got educated, and I'm the one that earned it. Uh-uh. Who gave you the wisdom to learn? Without God, you can do nothing. Absolutely nothing. Notice here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From the, this time forth, and what? Forevermore. You know what? That goes a little bit further than this life here on earth. It goes, hey, listen. Around the throne of God. Read on the book of Revelation. Holy, 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 continuously. All the time, God's being blessed, receiving praise. Well, those that have already outstripped us, the angelic host that's there, uh, continuously praising. And I just can't hardly wait to get up there and do my little bit of praising, thanking God for what He's done down here for me. You say, Brother Melvin, you mean you want to go to, you, you mean you want to, go to heaven today? I don't want to get on the next load. I'm no fool. But I'll tell you what, when my time comes, I'm ready. I don't know when, I, I don't know when it'll happen. But I want to tell you one thing. Don't worry about this, old man. I'm ready to go when God calls me. Then we see the example of praise and then the practice of praise to the Lord. The latter part of that verse, it says, From the rising of the sun until the going down of the of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. You say, well, Brother Melvin, the rising of the sun and the going down of the sun, you mean to tell me we're supposed to praise God all the day long? Yes. Well, now, you mean to tell me I've got to go around shouting all the time? No. You do that, people call you crazy. In fact, they'll be sending the padded wagon after you. But I want to tell you one thing. You can praise him in your heart. You can praise him in the smile that you give to others. Go around. People look at you and say, is that person really a Christian? Right. <laughs> no. Pleasant attitude. Smile. Happy. 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 We've got a right to be happy today. He said, now, Brother Melvin, you just don't know what I'm going through. Well, if he can't bring you through it, he won't bring you to it, according to my daughter-in-law over there. Oh, listen, as we look at this, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised from this time forth and what? Forevermore. In other words, we're praising him today. You agree with me? We're praising God today. We, he wants us to praise him all the time. And look, we see in heaven the 24 elders represented by the, uh, uh, represented the redeemed will cry out forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy. But go to the book of Revelation now, chapter 4, verse 11. The revelator says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things. 
Kids, young adults, I won't call you kids. You don't like to be called kids. You go to that schoolhouse and you tell that science teacher that they're wrong. That whoever printed that book is wrong. God has a book and it's right. God created. This thing just didn't happen by happen chance. How in the world could this universe, everything be so perfect? Everything, the rise of the sun going down, everything is perfect. And they say it all started with a big bang. Well, I want to tell you this one thing. If it started with a big bang, I know who lit the firecracker. Oh, listen. When we leave God out of the equation, we've missed the mark. You see, it's all God this morning, folks. It's all about Him, not about us. Oh, listen. As we look at these verses, I'm excited about it. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to, be, to receive glory and honor. Verse, that's Revelation 4.11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Praise, dear friend, is not supposed to be something that we do when we feel like it. Well, now, Brother Melvin, you just don't know how I feel. I've had a bad day. Oh, my cat almost got run over. My dog barked all night long. My kids was fussing. My neighbor threw garbage in my yard. I've had a bad week. <laughs> I want to tell you one thing. These little things in life are just nothing compared to my God. We have a right to praise Him today for what He's already done. You see, your neighbor can't save you. The dogs bark, but you can give them some food and shut them up. These things are so simple in our life. But these, I'm, I'm using these little illustrations to show you the simplicity of things that upset us. Well, you just don't know. My boss is so mean. Be thankful you got one. A lot of folk don't. Oh, listen. Give thanks to God today because he's on the throne. As we look at this scripture a little bit further. Oh, uh, like I said, praise is not supposed to be when you feel like it. <laughs> praise is supposed to be done all the time. Then we look at uh, Psalms chapter 113, verse 4, a little bit further. and says, the Lord is high above all nations. Go to the UN and tell them that. In fact, go to Washington, D.C. right now and tell them that. By the way, he's not riding a Pope mobile either. You tell them Melvin Payne said that. I'm not afraid to speak it. The Lord is high above all nations and His glory above all the heavens. You say, whoa, Brother Melvin, you said all the heavens. That's what the book said. What do you mean by all the heavens? Did you know that's three heavens? Three heavens? The atmospheric heaven that we live in? The stratosphere heaven beyond that one. And the ionosphere heaven where God's at. God's word has always been true. And science is just now finding out God is always true. Only they're stu too stupid to believe it. Oh, they, they, they find out the facts after it happens, but they want to come up with their spin on how it happened to show man's intellectualism. They're dumb. My God's powerful today. Who hath humbled himself? Who is like to the Lord our God on, who dwelleth on high? He's greater than all the glories of heaven. God's greater than. And then we go to verse number 6 of chapter 113. Who humbleth himself to behold all things that are in heaven and in earth. He looks around and he sees he looks around and he knows. By the way, he knows what you're thinking right now. Uh oh. Brother Melvin, I wish you'd hurry up and be quiet. I got to get to the restaurant. God knows it. You hadn't hid it from God. I just don't think he's preaching right. 
God heard it. He knows. You see, He knows the thoughts, the intents of our heart. <laughs> We're serving an awesome God today. Folk, did you know that this morning when you got up, got started getting dressed to come to this house of God, God knew He was going to be here? Those people that are not here today, God knew they were going to get up, get dressed, and go to the lake. And tell them I said so. Amen. But look at this very carefully. <laughs> it says in verse number six, who humbleth himself. He condescends. Do you know how he humbled himself? He condescended to come to this low ground of sin and sorrow through his son, Jesus Christ. It's amazing that God would, like, that he would condescend to a place like this, that he created to save a creation that he created and had turned their back on him. But he condescended and he came down. It's all because of his grace. That's why we praise him. In verse number seven, he raiseth up the poor out of the dust, lifteth the needy out of the dung hill. He lifts us above the shadow. There are things in life that cause shadows to come. Ill and failing health is a shadow. This body, because of the initial fall of sin, is decaying. From the time of the first cry of the newborn, all until the last groan of the weary, dying body. We're headed toward the grave. It behooves us to live one day at a time and seek God first in His righteousness, His kingdom. He says all these other things are going to be added to us if we'll do that. Very simple. That's a very simple plan. It's not, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. All God wants us to do is just be obedient children today. Let him be the Lord of our life. Give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. Seek you first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you, is the word of God. Oh, today, it's a good day to be a Christian. I hope and I trust that you have a praiseful heart to, for what he's doing in your life today. As we look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, 6, 7, and 8 real hurriedly, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being deformed in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death on the cross. Why? There's just one reason. And Luke 10, 19, 10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. You see, the grace of his rising up was visible. He lifts up those who are in need today. Those who need Jesus Christ, those who need salvation, he lifts you up by the blood. Those who are down and out, he lifts you up through the lifting of your spirit. He says he supplies all our needs according to his riches in glory. He lifts us up. And then when we cross over this earthly walk into, into eternity, he lifts us up into his presence. He's an uplifting God today. Romans chapter 3 verse 10 says, as it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. Oh, I'm telling you what. I've seen a lot of righteous people in my life. But God says there's none righteous. Look around you. You know what you're looking at? A bunch of sinners. 
bunch of sinners. I've told this years ago. Dave's probably heard it so many times. Let me tell you one more time. Over the Trinity by the railroad tracks, there's a lady that was visiting. She got up to testify one night. She just said, I just got to tell you one thing. I haven't sinned in 20 years. That woman sinned right then. She lied. And I know she sinned because I knew her reputation. She was a busybody, couldn't keep her mouth shut. Oh, listen. But in Romans chapter 3, verse 10, it says, There is none righteous, no, not one. But he says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He's paid the price, my dear friend. And he will save all people who will believe in him. As the Apostle Peter writes in his first epistle, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. All this because of his greatness. He counsels our past. Sins are gone. You say, Brother Melvin, you mean a Christian does not sin? Yes, Christians do sin. But they're gone. Why? They're under the blood. They're under the blood today. He takes the worst of humanity and uses them for his glory. I've seen those who were down and out through the years. I've seen God save an old sinner, an old reprobate, clean him up, straighten him out, put him in the pulpit, preaching the gospel. God can change your life today, folks. He makes the difference. And without him... You're hopelessly lost. You need Jesus to die. Who is here? Because of his greatness, he counsels our past sins are gone. He takes the worst of humanity and uses them for his glory. He took Gideon from the threshing floor. He took Saul from, the, uh, from following the donkeys. He took David from leading the sheep. The apostles from the fish. Us from our deadest in sin. Ephesians 2, 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. All this was foreordained and planned of God. Did you know that God even knew that you was going to be sitting here today before you was even born to this world was created? In his foreknowledge, he saw from the beginning to the end. He knew everything would happen. He knows everything's happening, and he knows everything's going to happen. You say, wow, that's God. He changes us all the way. He does not do it halfway. Some folks believe that you can be saved, but then if you sin, you've got to go back and get it all over again. That would mean that Jesus would have to go back to the cross. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's created new. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Whew. He takes a dry life caused by sin and causes us to bring forth fruit for him. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Who would have ever thought Melvin Payne would stand before a crowd of people and preach the gospel? My word, in high school I had a hard time even standing before the class and just giving a book report. But God can take the impossible and make it possible today if we are only willing to allow him to do that. Oh, listen. 
He wants to lift us up. He wants to encourage us. He wants to help us. He wants us to praise him because he's God, because he's God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. As they come with a song of invitation very quietly, let me ask you this question as they come very quietly. They begin to play very softly on the instruments. Church, isn't he worthy of our praise today? Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around, not just for the praise of our lips on Sunday mornings when we sing his, his goodness and his grace, but do our lives, our, our everyday life, does it praise him? This morning, listen very carefully. Maybe God has revealed to you some emptiness in your life. Some area in your life that you're slack in or lax in. You don't have the joy and you don't have the happiness about God. You don't have the happiness about His church and being regular in attendance and participating in His church as you did once in the past. Now, this is a truth. Many of us, you see, we, we try to fill this void with all sorts of things pleasures, activities, things of this nature. But I want to tell you something. Only God, now listen, only God can truly feel that need in your life. Now I want to challenge you this morning. Why don't you come to this altar today? Why don't you let God have his rightful place in your life? Many of you, some of you might not have ever even trusted him for salvation. You ought to come today. Come today, come now. If you've allowed other things to get in your way, listen, things that have kept you from being faithful to him, you come on now. Let Jesus be the Lord of your life today. Heavenly Father, in the holy name of Jesus I've opened the book preach the word offer the challenge we rest our case at the foot of the cross in Jesus name would you stand to your feet as we begin as a group sing this song together is our heart right with God today church God's challenged us today. This week we've been challenged. What about you? Are you as close to God as you used to be? Don't be ashamed to come down here and get this altar. If you're ashamed, something's wrong. If you're afraid, you're letting the devil have the advantage. But you need to obey God as we begin to sing right now. Sing. You obey God right now. That's right. Come right on. You obey God right now. Is your heart right with God? Is your heart right with God this morning? Are you as close to God as you?